Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to my newest members. Thank you for becoming a member, Bahadur, Adam and Zero Over Zero. Members are giving shout outs in my videos and you can easily become a member by clicking the join button. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to be solving a basic functional equation. We have f of x plus 2 equals x times f of x. And we're also given that f of 2 is equal to 2, and we're going to find f of 8 from here. Okay, let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem. Another question that I would like to raise at this point is, can we find an expression for f of x? Like f of x equals mx plus b, f of x equals a times x squared, or anything like that. So let's get started x and x plus 2 differ by 2, and 2 and 8 differ by 6. So that kind of tells me that I need to take a couple steps to go from 2 to 8 in terms of x. So I start with this, and I need to go to 8. And every time the increment is 2, so I'm increasing by 2. Now, instead of writing the functional equation this way, let's go ahead and write it in the following way. f of x plus 2 divided by f of x equals x. Now this will be a little better because this is actually going to allow me to manipulate the expression uh, faster. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace x with 2 first and then from here I'm going to be getting f of 4 over f of 2 equals 2 and then I'm going to replace x with 4. That's going to give me f of 6 divided by f of 4 equals 4 and then I'm going to replace x with 6 and that's going to give me if I replace x with 6 here f of 8 divided by f of 6 and that's equal to 6. Now I'm trying to find f of 8 and I do know f of 2 so I do know f of 2 I can go ahead and plug it in but there's actually a better way to handle this as a system. Since I have these three ratios, why not put them together? In other words, multiply. Let's multiply f of 4 over f of 2 by f of 6 over f of 4, and that by f of 8 over f of 6. Now, I do know that the values are 2, 4, and 6, right, from left to right. So this is going to be equivalent to 2 times 4 times 6. So that's nice. That is going to be 8 times 6, which is 48. But what about the left-hand side? Why did I multiply all these ratios? Because I can cancel them out. So for example, f of 4 cancels out as long as it's not equal to 0. And from these equations, we do know f of 4 does not equal 0. None of these can be 0, right? And what about f of 6? That can also be canceled out. And we end up with f of 8 over f of 2 equals 48. Now remember our goal is to find f of 8 and we do know f of 2. f of 2 is equal to 2 so replace f of 2 with 2 you get f of 8 divide by 2 equals 48 and now finally we can find f of 8 to be 96 from here. Okay great so that will be the answer but let's go ahead and take a look at possible solutions for f. So is it possible to find a solution for f of x? For example, one of the questions that you should always raise is with functional equations, is this a linear function? Is this a quadratic function? Or in general, is this a polynomial? Or can f of x be a polynomial? If it is, what is the degree? So those kinds of questions are important. If you have any idea about what f of x looks like, then the solution might be a little easier. For example, if you know f has to be logarithmic or exponential, remember this morning we did, you know, another equation. Uh, you can check it out. Anyways, so it will be helpful to know more about the function. So you can test it out. It's totally trial and error. Uh, that's perfectly fine. I know some people don't like it, but, you know, it's just experimental. So, for example, can f of x be... A linear function. Let's just test it out. How about ax plus b? Okay. 
if f of x is x plus b, then f of x plus 2 is going to be a times x plus 2 plus b. And then we can just go ahead and plug it in. a times x plus 2 plus b can that equal x times ax plus b. And then from here we get ax plus 2a plus b equals ax squared plus bx. Now this is problematic. You know why? Because we have a quadratic on the right hand side and a linear function on the left hand side. So as long as a does not equal 0 or if uh, unless a equals 0 we have a problem. What happens if a equals 0? We can also check that out, right? So if a is equal to 0 then we're going to get something like this. x squared cancels out, x cancels out. We end up with b equals bx, but this is not true for all x values. If b is equal to 0, then it's going to be true, right? So we have a equals 0, b equals 0 gives you what? f of x equals 0. It gives you the 0 function. Now, does the 0 function satisfy this? It does, except for the fact that f of 2 is not 2. So you also have to consider when you are, you know, experimenting with different functions, you also have to satisfy that f of 2 equals 2. So f, f of x obviously is not linear. Can it be a quadratic? Probably not. The problem here is that you multiply f by x, so if f of x is of any degree, this is just going to increase the degree of f, if it's a polynomial, of course. So they're not going to have the same degree, and that's that's a problem. So it's not going to be a polynomial. Can it be exponential? You can co just continue to test it, like, hey, can it be something like a times b to the power x, so on and so forth. So, for example, in this case, it would look like this. f of x plus 2 would be a times b to the power x plus 2. And that would mean a times b squared times b to the power x. But if you think about, again, our f of x, f of x plus 2, a times b squared times b to the power x. Does this equal x times a times b to the x? Again, it's not going to work. So exponential functions don't work either. Is there a type of function that will satisfy this? I'm going to leave that question open. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.